So I'm going to talk today a little bit about um, <clears throat> some of the work that goes on in my group. My group is interested in a number of things, and one of them being atherosclerosis because I'm a cardiologist by training. So our major areas of interest is we use a combination of computational and biochemical tools to understand the pathogenesis of plaque rupture. Plaque rupture is the event that's associated with... Uh, with uh, myocardial infarctions, actually usually fatal myocardial infarctions. So it's typically the person who's walking down the street, he or she grabs their chest, they fall down, and they die. And that, that, is, that is what I mean by plaque rupture. The pathophysiologic correlate of that is you have an atherosclerotic plaque. It is covered by a bit of collagen, and the collagen ruptures. And that rupture leads to a big thrombus, a clot that forms in a vessel. And that is the pathophysiology underlying that event. So in addition to this work, we also are interested in identifying patients who are at high risk of adverse cardiovascular events like death, using very simple data, and uh, building models for proteins that play a role in neurodege neuro neurodegenerative disorders. Since this is a, a group that is interested in imaging, I will mainly be talking about this. So this is the uh, uh, relatively young gentleman. You know, it's a, we call this a Levine sign. It's having a myocardial infarction. And this is associated with a number of events. So first, as I talked about, there's an atherosclerotic plaque that sits in a vessel that feeds uh, blood to the heart, gives the heart oxygen, nutrients, and so forth. And this is actually a specimen taken from someone who died of a fatal myocardial infarction. And there's an atherosclerotic plaque. There was a rupture of this fibrous, fibrous uh, um, cap. And uh, the ensuing event was the formation of a thrombus, a clot. So before, the lumen of the vessel was this wide. And after this plaque rupture, you had this clot. So the lumen of the vessel is effectively decreased suddenly. And we've done a number of studies to look at actually the etiology of this, uh, this uh, rupture event, which is collagen, and collagen being degraded. And we've done a number of computational studies to understand the basic fundamental biochemical mechanism understanding collagen degradation. But that's what I'm going to talk about today. What I'm, what I'm going to talk about in the 50 seconds that I have left is that if you take a look at this patient, there's a lot of data that you can acquire. You can acquire MRI images, but there's lots of low-lying fruit, so lots of bio biometric data, electrocardiographic data, blood pressure data that you that get from a patient when he or she visits their doctor uh, if they're in the intensive care unit. And the question is, can you use this information to risk stratify, identify patients who are at high risk of, of, of death or congestive heart failure? And we look at the um, electrocardiogram. The electrocardiogram actually encodes a lot of information about the patient. To have a normal electrocardiogram is a lot. It means that your heart is normal, the conduction system is normal, the interaction of the heart with the nervous system is normal. And so, we actually, our hypothesis is, is small alterations from beat to beat are, are, tells you something, it encodes information about the health of the cardiovascular system. And so we actually want to quantify differences between beats, and we do this using dynamic time warping, and we've developed a measure called morphologic variability. I know my time is up, I'm sorry. Um, morphologic variability that actually takes two beats, aligns them, and you get a distance measure of how different two beats are. And from this, we developed this measure, which actually looks at the variation within the beats. And we've shown in a recent paper in Science Translational Med Medicine that patients that have lots of variability are at much higher risk of death. Um, so, wish list. We would like a low-cost device, and we're actually working on this, to uh, actually um, um, record biometric data over long periods of time so that we can record these uh, electrocardiographic measures and restratify patients. And this is my contact information. Thank you.